They are attending a 61-year-old man who collapsed during a visit to his local chiropractor. That's all you'll need. They'll have their own viver in there. All right. The chiropractor immediately began CPR. Within minutes, an intensive care ambulance arrived. The situation was so critical, they called for backup. So I want to take over okay. CPR. All right, Sarah, I can jump in here. Uh, I've already given one adrenaline. Yep. Um, I'll need another adrenaline. Okay. Yes. Paramedics hope a second shot of adrenaline will help stimulate the man's heart. So there's no pulse. With no pulse, there's only one option left. Do I charge? Everybody clear? Clear. clear. I'll clear. Shot. That's the next adrenaline ready. CPR yeah. at 17.06. Paramedics wait to see if his heart has responded. Come on, John. Come on, John. Yep. I can't find the pulse. No. Okay. The defibrillator hasn't worked. All paramedics can do is continue heart compressions as they get the man to emergency. Um, so, confirmed cardiac arrest. Um, been doing CPR in there most of the time I was in there. They've just asked me to come out and arrange extrication of the patient. So I'm just looking at getting the bed in and working out how we can get him out. It's a matter of hoping his heart will start working again. Ready? Okay. Three, one, two, three. Got it. All right. Going the forward. patient had complained of back pain, pins and needles, and sweating the night before. Now he's fighting for his life. I don't think he really had an opportunity when he collapsed to, to realise what was happening. I think it would have happened really quite suddenly for him, even though he had the chest pain since last night, even though he probably could have prevented it. If the man had gone to hospital last night instead of the chiropractor this morning, his prognosis may not be as grim. Righto, rolling off. In the back of the car, it's really just a continuation of what's going on in the scene but in a more confined space. Just do a re-size, like just a recalibration of your hand position. Yep. Oh, you. Cardiac compressions keep the heart pumping blood around the man's body and also draw air in and out of his lungs. Keeping oxygen-rich blood flowing to his brain is critical. You're in charge of the monitor, you're in charge of the CPR, you're doing the airway, and there's only two of you to do that in a moving vehicle. Just weeks out of college, and Evan has a man's life in his hands. He's got pupil reaction, pupils are dilated, so that means there is some activity we found that he was returning to periods where his heart was beating, but it was not powerfully enough to actually push the blood around his system. So now, we're going to be it. So we're going to go for another shock. Okay. We had to stop at one point so we could shock. So Evan took over that, and he did that really well. It's the first time Evan has had to use the defibrillator in a real-life situation. Stay clear, delivering charge. Okay. It seems like such a trivial thing to just press a button on a machine and, and it's all done, but uh, it certainly caught me by surprise. The first time I did it, I hadn't really appreciated that, uh, you know, even having seen it in movies. I mean, you know, the whole body reacts. As a probie, I think it's really confronting. As a more senior officer, I suppose this is the thing we do best. Call was booked at 14.23. So, he's been in cardiac arrest since 1423. The man has now been in cardiac arrest for 54 minutes. I just can't stop this. That's okay, stop That's all right. A okay, he's off the oxygen. The man's survival will ultimately depend on the extent of damage to his heart and brain. It's all right, we're all right. Unfortunately, the patient was called as, as being deceased in the hospital only a few minutes after he arrived. Evan sort of stepped in, did great CPR, basically followed all the instructions that were given of him. Uh, so he's done well, he's performed as part of the team, and uh, at the end of the day, that's all you can ask, so he's done well.